Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Rundown. I'm Sunny Galt, and I am a messenger with United Network News, also known as UNN. And we are the official news channel for a group called CARE, which stands for the Center for Amity and Restoration of Earth. Because if you haven't noticed, we are in need of restoring our planet. And we cover all sorts of things. We talk about the real news. We have a newscast that comes out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday through our website at unitednetwork.earth. Now, you do need to be a member to get all of our content right when it comes out. But our newscasts are also released a week later on our YouTube channel and our Rumble channel. And if you want the links to those, you can go to our website and at the bottom navigation, it will have links to all of that, including our social media sites. But we talk about the real news because I don't know if you've noticed this, but we seem to have all this misinformation and disinformation coming at us from every single angle. And if you're anything like me, that is very frustrating, right? And I find myself when I catch some of these, because I don't really watch it because I, I know that what they're saying isn't true. But if I do happen to catch something, it's just infuriating, Right. And I find myself going, would someone just please tell the truth? So if that is you, then you have found the right place because that is our goal is to give you the information. It may not always be what you want to hear, but we are here to educate and inform and to be a guide because it's a very confusing time to be on this planet right now. And news has kind of gotten a bad rap. Right. And we need to change that. And that's what we're here for. This podcast in particular is a week in review. So if you missed our three newscasts that come out each week, or if you missed one of them, then you can always catch this podcast episode because I highlight some of the top stories. And if you aren't a member where you get the information right away, then this is also a good podcast for you to catch up on the stuff before it goes out to social media. Also, if you want to share content from UNN. This is a great way to do that as well. Kind of gives people a preview of what to expect if they were to become a member. So it's a great way to catch up and to stay informed. And we talk about all sorts of stories. We cover local stories, and that's done through the eyes of our beautiful field messengers. We talk about the new earth, which is where we're going as humanity, where our planet is going. By the way, we're not going anywhere. The new earth is not like a new planet being formed or anything like that. We're staying right here. But there's a lot of transformation that's happening, and you guys are a huge part of that. And so we motivate you and inspire you with stories of people that are already changing the planet. Most of these stories would never make mainstream media, right? But we're going to share them with you. We also talk about regional stories because it is important for us to know what's actually happening, like what laws are being passed, what are things that are specifically impacting people on this planet today. And some of those stories you'll hear probably, you know, in other media sources. But we do divide things up according to region because we think it's important for you to know what's happening across the world, across the planet, not just what's happening in your own backyard. And then we have something called our World Situation Report. And this is a breakdown of what's happening across the multiverse. So we do get into what the deep state is doing. We have a little bit different term for deep state than I think what most people are used to (laughs) in the alternative media, because the politicians and the typical names that you hear associated with deep state, that is not the deep state, guys. Those, Those guys are the puppets that just carry out the orders. You probably haven't heard of the characters that are the true deep state. So we usually talk about them as, you know, groups of people. You've got different militaries that are involved. You've got different generals that are involved. We'll use terms like the Black Sun or the Order of the Dragon. These are real groups out there that right now are vying for control over our planet. Now, they're not going to be successful, and we tell you in all of our newscasts why. Uh, They're failing miserably. (laughs) And I've got more information for you in this podcast about how miserable 
their plans are, and really they're just grasping at straws at this point. But we've got a lot of exciting stuff that's just on the horizon for humanity. Everyone's talking about this big eclipse that is coming up, right? We're going to talk about that a little bit later in our world situation report. So as we go through this, I encourage you guys, especially if you're not used to hearing our content or watching our newscast before, keep an open mind. Because the stuff we talk about here, you're not going to hear a lot of this anywhere else. That doesn't mean the information isn't right. We just have super high clearance to be able to get this information, the highest clearance, security clearance on this planet. That's what we have access to. So I encourage you guys, stick with us, think critically, always ask questions, even take notes, go back and Look up some of the content that we talk about, especially in the World Situation Report. Find this information out for yourself. There's still things that you can search for online. I know there's a lot of censorship, but I encourage you guys to do your own research because if you don't, if you're just listening to talking heads all the time and assuming that that is truth, then humanity is going to end up in this position that we're in once again. And we want to make sure that doesn't happen. Do your own research. Know the truth for yourself. We are a guide, but it's still up to you, right? Okay, well, today is April 6, 2024. It's a Saturday for me as I'm recording this. Here is the rundown of stories you may have missed this week on UNN. Okay, let's kick things off with our beautiful Field Messenger report. So Field Messengers are people, everyday people just like you, right? They care about their community and they share stories from what's happening in their area. They literally take out their phones and they show us. And we think this is the best way to tell stories because you guys care the most about what's happening in your community. And those are the stories that need to be told. And so in every newscast, we have at least two field messenger reports. So we've got six total that I'm going to share with you on today's podcast. Heads up, this is always better when you watch the field messenger reports because the whole idea is to get to know each other better. So I'm just going to give you kind of a quick synopsis, but I encourage you guys to go back, even if you're not a member, go on YouTube and Rumble a week later, watch these stories because it's really important for us to start breaking down these stereotypical barriers that separate us, right? That tell us, oh, you're from this place. So, you know, we, we assign these labels. Or we're like, oh, that means, you know, you don't have any money or you don't have this or whatever. And it's not necessarily true. We really need to start listening to each other. And that's what these reports are all about. So let's get started. On Monday, we have two reports that deal with water issues. The first one is from Gibrand, who is out of Nigeria, and she shares with us a story from the Akapachi community there because they are struggling with severe water scarcity. In fact, the visuals on this are pretty profound because she shows us this small mud pond that this community is using to quote unquote meet their water needs, which is kind of a joke because it's not meeting the needs, right? I'm sure they have to boil this water. There's no way anyone's just drinking, you know, this murky kind of water. But this is what they're using in their community. When we talk about restoration, this is one of the immediate things that needs to be taken care of. So this is drawing attention to it. So, G. Brand, thank you so much for your story. We also have Annette out of eastern Uganda, who is dealing with another water story, kind of a similar situation. There is an area that is actually a natural spring. Now, this is interesting because you would think a natural spring would be one of the best ways to get, you know, your water, you know, naturally in the environment, right? Because there's different natural filtration (laughs) systems that, you know, Mother Earth just builds into things. But if things become contaminated, that's when there's a problem. And this happened in this community in eastern Uganda. And again, they're having issues getting access to clean water. On Wednesday, our Field Messenger reports had a different theme. So we're going from water issues and now we're kind of switching focus to talk about some different sporting activities. So we kick things off with Candace in the United States. She's actually in Missouri. And she did a story on pickleball. 
Not sure if this is popular in other places, but here in the U.S., pickleball is really picking up (laughs) and becoming really popular, especially amongst senior citizens. So this is a sport that's basically, it's a combination. It has different elements to it. It's like ping pong, badminton, and tennis kind of combined all into one. And it's not as hard on the body, so that's why a lot of senior citizens are getting involved. And Candace's story was about how her local, I'm not sure if it was a YMCA or YWCA, but I believe they offer some free programs if you qualify as a senior citizen, and you can go in and you actually don't need a membership. You can go into these facilities and play pickleball for free. And there's touring, like, you know, there's competitions and things like that. So quick story, uh, back in November, my family and I, my kids and myself, we went to Florida to visit my parents who were vacationing there. So they were on vacation and we decided to join them for a little bit. And I learned that my dad was really getting into pickleball. And the place that we were staying, they had, I think it was like every Tuesday or Wednesday, they had pickleball. And so uh, my dad had a blast. He took my kids out on the court and they all learned how to play pickleball. It's actually really fun. I played tennis a little bit uh, growing up, and so I can appreciate pickleball. So our second story on Wednesday was from Emma, and Emma's in the Canary Islands out of Spain. Have you guys ever heard of kite foil? So the video on this is really interesting if you watch the actual story that Emma did. If not, you can search up kite foil. I had to do this because I didn't I didn't know this was a thing. Kite foil is actually making its way into the Olympics. So the next Olympics, the Summer Olympics, is in Paris. And in the Canary Islands, they are doing some Olympic training for kite foiling that Emma reported on. So she got some great video of this. This is a sport that uses, I believe it's called a foil board, which is kind of, kind of looks like a surfboard, except it kind of looks like there's a stick out of the water. And then, so it's like hovering over the water, if that makes sense. And it has these wings on it. And then people pull themselves through a kite. So it's kind of like surfing. I know some people are going to be like, it's nothing like surfing. But this is how I describe it, not being a kite foiler. (laughs) It reminds me of a form of surfing, but you're not right on the water while you're flying a kite. And that's kind of, for me, that's like patting my head and rubbing my tummy at the same time. So I really appreciate these kite foilers. Um, And so uh, Emma went through and, you know, grabbed some video of these people. They're really good. They're really good. So if you are interested in that, I heard that if you're in an area where the wind is lighter, that's where kite foiling might be better than actually doing this on some sort of surfboard. So I don't know. Check it out. Looks really good. I bet it's really good activity. (laughs) Just kind of like the the pickleball with the senior citizens. Actually, Emma, our field messenger, was on a roll this week because we have another report from Emma. This was on Friday. Again, she's reporting from the Canary Islands in Spain, and she takes us on a little journey. Let's call it a hike through the volcanic landscapes of Fuerteventura. And that is, again, in the Canary Islands. And it's quite a unique place. There's a bunch of different volcanic uh, structures, let's just call it. Obviously, all natural. And this is one of the attractions for a lot of tourists. And it's a pretty good workout as well. And then our final story on Friday was from Lana in Alaska, of course, in the United States. And this was a beautiful story because Lana in Alaska, looks out her backyard, and it's snowing, or at least there was snow on the ground, and she sees a moose, which is something we don't all see in our backyards. I live in Southern California. I can't say that I've ever looked out of my window and saw a moose. However, I have lived in some places where that is possible, so I really appreciated this story. And she gives us a little bit of a background of moose and what you need to keep in mind if you see one. Obviously, this is more of a common occurrence in Alaska, a beautiful creature, and it's actually part of the deer family. I was kind of surprised by that. Uh, but a, a very uh, sturdy and robust animal and uh, beautiful to look at, but you don't want to get too close. All right, let's talk about our stories from the New Earth. And this is a portion of our news that is designed to encourage you guys, to inspire you, because there's a lot of things happening within humanity, with our own minds and bodies and our spirit, as well as the spirit of our planet. 
and it's changing everything. And we're discovering new things about ourselves, and it's a really exciting time. So this portion of the newscast usually starts off with a quick little interview, like a five to seven minute interview that I do. And then we have some inspiring stories. So let's first go through the interviews. Let's kick things off with Michelle and Phillips. And this was on Monday. Michelle is a Theta Healing Practitioner. Theta is a brainwave state. It's a brainwave pattern. And when you're connected to spirit, to God, to source, the creator of the universe, you are actually in theta mode. So we talk about, it's more of the scientific way of looking at it, (laughs) but we talk about how to get into theta and the amazing things you can do when you are connected to source. And in this quick little interview, we talk about clearing limiting beliefs because we know that we are creators. We create things all day long. It may not feel that way because sometimes you feel like you're on the hamster wheel, but all day long you are creating, you are making decisions and you are creating a reality for yourself. And sometimes we have these beliefs that we call limiting beliefs because they're they're not real, they're not truths. These are just beliefs that we have about our environment, about us, about our family, about our work, or whatever it is, but it limits us because we kind of trap ourselves. But you can get rid of these limiting beliefs where, you know, this I would say the sky is the limit, but I think it's even more, it's even more expansive than that, right? The multiverse is the limit. I'm not sure what the new phrase is going to be. But you can clear these limiting beliefs. And Michelle goes through and talks a little bit about how you do that and the importance of it. Then on Wednesday, this is a new expert that we have on. I don't really like to call them experts, but in this case, Jeff Feynman is a holistic veterinarian. Okay, so quick story, because it was hard to find Jeff. <laughs> um, I do have, um, we have Kim, it's, it's not Kim Gogan, but we have another person on our team named Kim, and she has been helping me find experts or people to interview for the new earth. And I said, I really want to interview a holistic veterinarian because I know so many of you that watch the news have animals and you just love them to pieces and you don't want anything bad to happen to them. And if something does happen, you want the most natural, organic, holistic way of dealing with that. And that's not talked about a lot. So Kim was helping me find someone. We reached out to so many different holistic vets. And what we found out is that they don't usually like to talk to the public. I mean, they have their own patients, you know, you know, clients or what would you what would you call that? You know, pet owners. okay, that come and see them. But as far as providing general information, that doesn't usually happen because and I found this out later after talking with Jeff, which I called Dr. Jeff because he's a holistic vet. um, They're concerned about repercussions for speaking out against, you know, things that typical veterinarians do, right? So it's kind of the same thing with medicine, right? You have your allopathic medicine and anyone that speaks out against that or provides an alternative, you know, they're kind of shunned in different ways. They can revoke licenses. You know, we saw this whole thing with the, with the COVID stuff, right? And so we're seeing this happen with veterinarians as well. So long story short, we had to go through a whole laundry list of people <laughs> But Jeff, thank goodness, Dr. Jeff reached back out, and he's such a beautiful, gentle soul. I recorded a bunch of little segments with him, so we aired the first one on Wednesday. And this first segment talks about the challenges that holistic vets are having right now. And I didn't even realize this, but did you know that a lot of vets, not just holistic vets, but a lot of vets are committing suicide, which I know sounds horrible. But the reason this is happening is because vets get into this business because they love animals, you know, and what they're finding is they have a heart for animals, but they're being forced to do stuff that they know is not in the best interest of their patients, so to speak, a dog or a cat or whatever the case may be. And it's literally breaking their heart. And so we talk about some of these challenges with Jeff and and we have a a bunch of other segments planned with him. So uh, those of you who are you know, pet lovers have, you know, pets and, you know, want to do good by your pets. You guys are going to love this segment. 
All right. And then on Friday, we had Lee Degani back on the news. Now, Lee is a healer. She is a teacher. What we typically talk to Lee about is her experience with these New Earth children. I'll just call them New Earth children. These are children that are wired a little bit differently. And that's what our whole segment on Friday was about. Because she's seen this firsthand and she now helps parents that have kids. Well, you know, that is the definition of a parent. (laughs) But more awakened parents help their children really find their place. Because it is a different world. These kids are wired differently. And they're here to help us restore our planet. They're here to help us with this whole transition. And in this segment, Lee talks about being a teacher. And she's been a teacher for decades. I don't know. Has it been 30-some years, she said? I can't remember the exact number. So she's been doing this a while. And she remembers the change, you know, seeing like a new group of souls come in. And she talks about that. It's fascinating. All right. Here are some stories to inspire you guys. A city in Denmark is creating what they're calling a circular economy. Now, this is allowing people to give stuff away and also take home assorted items for free. So it's kind of an an enclosed system, if you will, for this. They're calling it also a recycling center. There's one in particular that has been called, uh, the name of it is Reuse, right? Very appropriate. And, you know, we have some stuff, at least here in the States, we have some stuff that's similar. You know, I'm thinking of places where you can donate items, but it's not really its own economy, right? It is just, oh, I just need to donate and someone's going to come pick some stuff up. So this is more of a give and take experience, right? So that's why they call it a circular economy. No money is exchanged. There is a simple sign-in process. So I, I think there's some stuff that you can, you know, do online and, you know, you give and you take, you know, beautiful system. Speaking of animals, right, because we we had our holistic vet on, that same newscast, we meet a very special horse. A horse is a horse, of course, of course. <laughs> I really think you guys need to check out the video for this because this is a horse in northern France. His name is Peyo, P-E-Y-O. And get this, he visits terminally ill patients or people. And he's a retired show horse. He's 17 years old. And this is just a horse that's very sensitive to people with illnesses. Now, I've heard this before with horses. And for those of you who have horses, I'm sure, you know, we'll get some feedback about how amazing horses are because they do have a tendency to connect with humanity on a very special level. And We've known that for a while, but this horse like takes it to another level. This horse can detect cancers, tumors, you know, these kind of horrific things happening within the body. And, you know, it just responds to the person and is just there to love on them and to share that special moment and make that person feel special. So go check out Peyo. What an amazing horse. And the last story that I want to share with you is about children being taught emotional intelligence, which is so important because we don't really spend a lot of time talking about this kind of stuff. I guess we just think people are just supposed to figure it out, but then they don't really figure it out and we end up messed up, right? So I'm so glad this kind of information is being shared. This is the power of pausing, breathing deeply, developing strategies to manage your feelings constructively. And also expanding your vocabulary beyond things like, oh, I feel happy, I feel sad. Like, let's go a step deeper. Let's really talk about your emotions so we can communicate better. So often, you know, as as parents or caregivers, grandparents, you know, it's so easy to be like, oh, stop crying, stop whatever. But we have to emote. Our feelings, our emotions are so important. It is what makes us human. So we have to go through this process or, you know, it could be great feelings as well. You want to be like, oh, no, you know, don't act too happy. You know, you'll upset so-and-so. No, be happy. You know, what, what a beautiful gift that you've been given. And when we embrace these beautiful emotions that we have, it builds healthy relationships. It helps us manage our stress levels better. It just helps with our overall well-being. So we need to encourage this more with our kids. And thank goodness this is being taught more. 
Moving on to our regional news. So we like to give you guys an update of what's happening around the world. Some of these stories you may see in other you know, media outlets, but we always try to pick stories that have a direct impact on people. So I'm not really interested in what non-governmental, you know, organizations have to say or even governments for that for that matter because what they say doesn't really matter matter like I said, they're talking heads, they're puppets, they were given a script to say. So, we don't really cover that. What we cover is what's happening that is going to directly impact people on some level. And we should be aware of what's happening around the world, not just what's happening in your own backyard. So in each newscast, we have uh, at least 15, 15 to 20 different stories. So for this podcast, I like to look at any trends that I see uh, throughout the week. So there's two topics that we actually did quite a bit of coverage on this last week. We talked a lot about travel. So we have one, two, three, four, five stories that I want to share with you about travel. And then technology. And there are six stories having to do with technology. So I'll go through these pretty quickly. Just want to give you guys an overview. Of course, again, you can watch the entire newscast for more details. So let's start with travel. China has issued a travel advisory for citizens visiting the U.S. So these are Chinese nationals coming over to the U.S. And what they're saying is this includes all types of people, including students, you know, corporate employees, but they're coming over and as part of the process of allowing them into the U.S., they are being searched. There are these what China is calling unwarranted searches and they even said interrogation by U.S. airport law enforcement. And as a result, not only are they saying that that part's not right, but a lot of people are being denied entry. Again, this is according to China. All right. They claim these actions are political and discriminatory. So, again, we want to give a heads up to anyone that's traveling that this is a potential. Right. This is being reported on. So could be important if you are Chinese national, you know, wanting to come to the U.S. Next story is about Bulgaria and Romania. Both of these countries have entered the Schengen zone. If you haven't heard of that before, you can actually look it up. Because it'll show you a map. So this is an area encompassing 29 European countries that have officially abolished border controls at the mutual borders. Okay, so we've got two more countries now that have joined this zone. And this allows travel right now by air and sea within most European Union countries. And this was based on an agreement that was signed last year. Now, this whole process isn't quite complete yet. They are moving toward complete integration with the land border crossings by the end of this year, and they also are going to abolish all passport checks. Next story is about flight cancellations in India, and it involves Vistara, which is an Indian airline. And they have right now a lot of flight disruptions, and it's due to a shortage of pilots In fact, this week, more than 50 flights were canceled. Also, they reported 160 flights were delayed as well. And what was happening is a lot of their pilots were calling in sick, quote unquote sick, because they weren't actually sick. They were upset about the revised salary structure for themselves as part of the airline's merger with Air India. So... Obviously, they're not happy with their wages or how they're getting paid. There's something, you know, the details haven't really come out with this. But this is a major problem. And at least as of us doing this story, there wasn't a way to resolve this. So people were getting involved and, you know, they were trying to help people that were trying to travel. But it was kind of a big mess. So that was going on this week. Also, in Germany, after months of strikes and negotiations... The German Train Drivers Association and Deutsche Bahn have reached a wage agreement. There's a theme. You see all this wage stuff, right? Because inflation is through the roof and cost of living is insane, right? So everybody needs more money. With this situation, though, in Germany, these strikes, these negotiations, it halted train services. This forced millions to travel in other ways. 
and the GDL, which is the German Train Drivers Association, they demanded a 35-hour work week, but they wanted their full pay. Now, they did come up with some sort of an agreement. That information had not been released as well, but we're expecting to see that in the coming weeks. But at least for people that are traveling, everything is back up and running, and so it's a little bit easier to get around in Germany. Now let's talk about American Airlines here in America, the U.S. So they have made some changes to their pet policy. I don't know if you guys have ever flown with a pet. We have a dog that is way too big (laughs) to travel. But there was a time for many years we had a smaller dog. And traveling with our little teacup poodle uh, was always a little bit of a challenge. So American Airlines is trying to make this a little bit better for pet parents. So passengers can now bring a pet inside the cabin along with their carry-on bag or personal item. So previously, they could only bring a small item. They've added on this whole carry-on bag, which is important because a carry-on bag is actually big enough where someone may not even have to check any luggage because it costs, I think, about $150 to bring a pet Onto American Airlines. I've actually done this with American Airlines in the past. So I think it's about $150. And, you know, if you have to pay for your luggage too, that's like, it's more money. You know, all this adds up. So they want to simplify things for pet owners. And in some cases, you may not even need to check a larger bag, which is nice. All right, those are our travel stories. Let's move on and talk about tech. All right, in Myanmar, Myanmar is mandating mobile providers to send draft notifications to men ages 18 to 35 years old. This is creating a ton of anxiety. Can you imagine, like, here in the U.S., we have our phones that are, like, tied to our hip, right? (laughs) Can you imagine a draft notice going out on your phone saying, hey, 18 to 35-year-old, you better report. You know, we need to send you off to God knows where. And this is creating a lot of uh, a lot of issues for people. Right. And it also is putting the mobile providers in a tough position because they're trying to balance a lot of things. Right. You don't really want to go against the government. In some cases, the mobile providers are state owned as well. So they don't have a lot of flexibility in what they do. They kind of have to do whatever their government says. Um, There have been instances, for example, um, there's a state-owned Myanmar Post and Telecommunications. The acronym for this is MPT. In the past, I guess there was a huge cyclone that came through Myanmar. They kind of do have the people's needs in mind because when that happened, they realized people weren't going to be able to pay their bills and they waived the fees for their cell phone, because they realize that they have an important role to play. So, you know, I I don't want to gang up too much on these mobile providers. They are in a very tough position. But as you can imagine, you know, getting a draft notice on your phone probably isn't the, you know, thing that you want to see when you wake up in the morning, right? AT&T had a data breach. This is huge. This is a confirmed data breach Uh, 73 million current and former customers, their information was leaked on the dark web. They said this is dating back to 2019 or even earlier, which means I'm now affected (laughs) because I had AT&T a while back. This includes personal details like social security numbers. They claim financial data and call records were not hacked We'll see about that, right? But they are encouraging people to monitor their accounts just to make sure that there's no weird stuff going on, you know? So keep an eye out for that. Let's talk about Google, right? Let's, you know, all these tech companies and spying on us and all this kind of stuff. You know, Google is known for that. Well, they have agreed to delete billions of personal data records from 136 million Chrome users in the U.S. Now, they didn't do this because they're, you know, suddenly grew a conscious, okay? This is a result of a lawsuit, and it is accusing the tech giant of surveying users' online activities even when, now get this, even when the user has entered into incognito mode. So if you don't know what that is, there is a way 
for your computer to not use the personal information. You know how sometimes you'll enter something into Google and it'll recognize information about you and it tries to, you know, improve your search as a result, for example, where you live, right? Well, you can go into something called incognito mode and it's not supposed to know anything about you. You are incognito, so to speak. Well, apparently that's not real. Surprise, surprise. I know, big news flash there. So there are concerns about their tracking practices. And this lawsuit alleges that they are collecting data despite privacy settings to prevent data collection. So they're not doing what they say that they are doing in protecting your data at all. Now, there's no financial settlement that's part of this because can you imagine 136 million Chrome users? Holy cow. So no financial settlement And uh, Google maintains that the lawsuit was without merit. All right. Got a couple stories with Amazon. Amazon has its hands in pretty much everything, right? Well, have you heard of something called a palm payment? So this is a payment method. It allows people to make purchases and access services with a palm scan. Now, most of our regular listeners or viewers of our newscast are going to hear a story like this and be like, why would you ever give someone your palm scan, your fingerprints or anything? But there are a large amount of people that are not thinking that they're doing anything nefarious with this, like giving out your fingerprint scans and stuff like that. I mean, think of how that could be used against you in various ways, like, I don't know, to commit a crime. I don't know. I mean, who knows what they would do? I have no idea. But I'm not willing to just give my my palm information out there. But apparently there are people that are doing this. And so there are apps available now on iOS and Android that allow you to scan your palm (laughs) at home in the convenience of your own home. So scan everything about you, right? And then you can easily use this When you're paying for goods, okay, it's available at uh, 500 Whole Foods market stores, Amazon stores, and then they also have third-party locations as well. And they're they're also saying that this tech could be used to streamline entry into lots of different things. Like, you know, instead of having like a printout or something like that, or even having some QR code on your phone, you know, you could just use the palm scanner to go into stadiums and airports and fitness centers, you know, all these different places that potentially could have a lot of people. Wouldn't that be nice if they could force you to scan your palm so they could do whatever they want to with it? So be careful of things like this, guys. Seriously, uh, I'm I'm still surprised that people are, are so willing to give such personal information out, but it is happening. Another story about Amazon. They are scrapping some tech They had a program called Just Walk Out. Now, I hadn't heard of this before. I had to look it up. But this is a system that allows you when you're shopping to, instead of going through a physical checkout line, you could just walk out (laughs) with the goods. And they're saying that this isn't working out. Surprise, surprise. They claim that there have been complaints about delayed receipts, privacy concerns, because it collects more biometric data. Obviously, that should be a concern, right? But I'm thinking, I don't know if we're getting the whole story here, because just walk out with goods doesn't sound like a good idea for the people that need to collect money for those goods. Now, they didn't mention that in the article, but I'm thinking, oh, come on, there's... (laughs) There's more to this story. So instead of doing just walk out without paying for the goods at all, apparently, they are going to use something called smart carts or dash carts. And these are uh, carts, I guess, you know, maybe, you know, I don't know if it's like a full shopping cart or like a small one you would kind of carry around, but it integrates a scanner into the shopping cart. So they're saying this is a better alternative because you can scan it as you go. It also gives you more information about the product and probably says if there's a discount, you know, all that kind of stuff that you can do when you scan it. So they're going to scrap their original just walk out policy uh, tech, if you will, and uh, switch things up a bit. So we'll see how that works out for them. All right, let's move on to another tech company that we all love to hate. Two of them, actually, Netflix and Facebook. And the parent company of Facebook is Meta. Okay, so Meta and Netflix are facing allegations in a class action lawsuit for compromising user privacy. 
You don't say. They are accusing these corporations, so Meta and Netflix, of a special relationship that would allow Netflix access to Facebook users' direct messages so they could get more information about people, allegedly to tailor content to them. Do you really need to listen to someone's or read someone's DMs in order to know what kind of movies they want? You know, can't you just look at their history? I'm thinking there's there's probably better ways to do this. But they say the companies have had close ties since 2011, Meta has refuted these claims, yada, yada, yada. We hear all about these kind of partnerships, right? And that whole thing that Meta had, Facebook had with Cambridge Analytica, this has been going on for a very long time. And we've talked previously on World Situation Reports about the backdoor access that three-letter agencies would have to all of this data. So it's not even necessarily that Meta and Netflix are directly involved in this, but it's these Three-letter agencies that used to have access, backdoor access, to get all this information on you. They don't even have to go through these companies. The companies, you know, it's just part of the whole system. Hey, you know, you you want to have XYZ program? Yeah, you're going to put it on this platform, and then everybody gets, you know, direct access on the back. So who knows what really happened here, but more and more of these stories are coming out of our data just not being safe. And you know what? That's not okay. Not anymore. Now it's time for some highlights from the World Situation Report. So this was a, is a time on the news where Kimberly Gogan from the office of The Guardian, she comes on and she shares with us what is happening on our planet. We talk a lot about deep state stuff, as well as what's happening throughout the multiverse, because God, Source, the Creator, is doing some incredible things as well. And a lot of things are being revealed right now, some really interesting historical information. We're going to get into that today. So we start off... The World Situation Report on Monday, that would have been April 1st. So Kim and I talk a little bit. I'm not going to play a soundbite, but we talk a little bit about it being April Fool's Day. Now, we know that our whole calendar system is a mess, right? And I brought up the fact, this is something that Source has been talking to me about for a while now, and that is, you know, we have switched you know, timelines. We are now in a single timeline. We are in a light age as opposed to a dark age. And we are going back to crystalline time. So this is the time before time, if you will. Now, I grew up in the church and the church talks about the end times. It's not really the end times, like the end of the world. That's not what's happening here. It is the end of time as we know it, because time is this fixed, it's a lower astral you know, a a fixed system, okay? It is not natural, and it's been used against us a lot. So I brought up to Kim, what in the world is really April Fool's Day? Because if you think about it, we know that January 1st on the Gregorian calendar is the, the start of our year, but it doesn't make a lot of sense for that to be the start of the year. It makes more sense for this to be in the spring. And actually, Kim said that this is what the others say as well. So ETs, people like that that are here to help us say that is actually the start of the year because it begins with life and life happens in the spring, right? You've got eggs and things like that, which is, you know, we associate with Easter and fertility, but that's about the start of life. And it's interesting because I said, I wonder if that somehow ties into April Fool's Day, because, haha, joke's on you. <laughs> it's actually spring is actually the start of your new year, not January, right? And our whole calendar is off as well. I brought up the fact that even if you look at the root words of some of our months, okay, if you look at the word September, the root word of that is sept, which means seven. But September is our ninth month. You can look at that with October. Oct means eight. Yet October is our 10th month. You can do the same thing with November and December and probably other months as well. So we are so off and that affects everything. That affects your circadian rhythm. That affects your fertility. That affects everything. And so I'm so looking forward to our whole calendar system being fixed. I don't know what that looks like because what does it look like when you're now on crystalline time, which we are? Maybe we won't have a need for this anymore on some level. It's hard for me to wrap my head around it at this point. But, you know, we'll see. But it is April Fool's Day, at least, you know, on Monday. So we talk a little bit about that. Kim also gives us an update on some stories 
that are kind of making the rounds on alternative media, and it's all fear-based. So you've probably seen stories about CERN. Okay, and their Hadron Colliders. And there's multiple colliders all around the world, but CERN gets all the publicity (laughs) usually. And there's some rumors that there's demons hanging out at CERN right now, which is interesting. It's actually founded in truth. It's just not true today. So CERN was used at one point when the Omega system was around. So we have the Alpha system which is a light system, an organic system, and that's what Kimberly runs. And then you had, because it's not around anymore, the Omega system, and that was the dark side of things. And it literally does not exist in any time, space, timeline. It is gone, gone, gone. But when the Omega system was around, CERN could actually conjure up these AI, because they are artificial, these demons, these AI-generated lower astral beings through portals that CERN was creating. That is a very real thing or was a very real thing. The problem now with them saying that there's demons hanging out at CERN, there's no more Omega system. So it doesn't matter what you fire up, you're not getting any demons. They're not trapped in any pockets. There's no way you can conjure these things up anymore if they're not already here on this planet. So you're not opening up a portal to bring in some demon. It's simply not happening. But this is fear porn that is tied to this solar eclipse that's happening on Monday, okay? So don't believe the hype when you hear stuff about CERN and they're trying to do this. I'm sure they would love for that to actually happen. But nothing is going to happen because the Omega system is not around and there are no beings hanging out down in hell anymore, for lack of a better term, the lower astral. There's no life down there anymore. God's source cut that off. So there's no access to it. There's not going to be any portals. Nothing's going to open up. So it doesn't matter what they do. Also, there are some rumors going around about bio warfare being released right before the eclipse. And Kim says this ties into the Red Dust event that we talked about last week. I can't remember if we actually talked about it on the podcast or if it was just on the newscast. But this was something, this was a a program or a system created by non-humans. And this tied into their harvest plan. We talked about this, I think it was a couple of podcasts ago. I think on March 23rd, that episode. So if you want to learn more about the harvest events and what was actually planned For this time, had we not entered a light age, some really nasty stuff was going to go down here. And they were going to pretty much wipe out our planet. And they would take our souls, our essence, and they would transmute that from light to dark and be able to use that in the lower astral to accomplish basically all their nefarious stuff. So this red dust was part of this whole plan that these ETs and lower astral beings put together to make sure there was... Pretty much nobody living on this planet. Now, the humans that are still around now have remnants of this plan. And they still think certain things are going to happen, but they're not. So if you hear things being said about the eclipse and, oh, you know, this this red dust is going to happen or, you know, this bio-warfare, all they're doing at this point, like maybe they think that's going to happen. It's absolutely not going to happen. But... It doesn't really matter if they can convince you that it's going to happen because you are a creator, you create things. We talked about this earlier. Then they want you to manifest it. They want you to create it. If you think about something so much, you help facilitate it actually happening, especially if there's a large group of people doing it. So do not fall into this trap, whether they're talking about CERN and their demons or some sort of bio-warfare that's going to happen with the eclipse. We're going to talk a little bit more about the, the eclipse, but don't buy into this fake stuff that's going on. They are desperate right now. They don't want anything to anything positive to happen with this eclipse, which is inevitable. We've got some great stuff coming our way, but this is just them trying to scare people. So don't fall into that trap. Now let's get you caught up on something that actually took place over the weekend. I think it started last Friday. Now, Kim wasn't on the news last Friday because things were kind of crazy. That was 
quote unquote Good Friday leading up until Easter and the deep state was really on the war path. So the soundbite that I want to play for you, it's kind of long. It's about, I think, 13 or so minutes. But I want to talk about, quote unquote, Good Friday (laughs) or the death of Christ on that Friday. So when I say Christ, I'm talking about the person known as Jesus, okay? Because that was a really real event that took place. And because he was such a light being, that caused a lot of problems. His death actually caused a lot of problems. And so now they try to use that in their favor every year. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Let me play this clip for you. And this is Kim talking a little bit more about, quote unquote, Good Friday and what they were hoping to accomplish. Now, isn't it funny that millions, if not billions of people around the planet were focused on the death of Christ on Friday? Billions of people were going to various religious facilities, having dinners, doing all types of things, focused at the same time on the death of Christ. Mm -hmm. As you well know, there is something called an anti-Christ. So you have crystalline time, crystalline energy, crystalline love. You have all of these Christ energies, so to speak. Um, And you have an antichrist energy. Now, what does that do for the planet? Well, starting on Friday, unfortunately for me, (laughs) uh, Friday, that would be at the earliest time, you know, over in Australia uh, when it turned to Friday, uh, much uh, earlier than it does here in the States. But what were they doing? <clears throat> they were going to various places on the earth, and I cannot believe that there's still anything left here. After all we have done, you know, they may be, maybe these are things that are only allegedly activated during this time of year because the Palabasini family and some of the SSP people were under the Vatican doing some sort of a weirdo ritual uh, that had to do with the death of Christ. Now, another one of the favorite colors of the deep state, Satanist churches, you see a lot of red and you see a lot of black. Yep. Now, anti-love or damnation, condemnation, uh, anti-corona uh, was actually a thing. It actually existed because it took the love of Christ when Christ died a few thousand years ago, a couple thousand years ago, and not going to give you an exact day because, you know, who knows? It's, we're in a calendar that, like you said, because our dates I mean, are all off. I know. <laughs> our dates are all off, so we don't know. We don't Reasonably, know. <laughs> on a day ending in Y, sometime around now, this all yeah. took place. and. Yeah. And I died so you don't have to, you know, you did not have to, uh, is a part of that. Part of that was a deal that was made for the Christ, the soul of this Mm -hmm. being, to go down to the lower astral and to give love to the, to anti-source during the dark age, not saying this is nothing against the being, you know, not Mm -hmm. to say that. That was a bad human. It wasn't when there were other consequences because the threat was very high uh, to destroy all of humanity, to destroy uh, Earth. And there's a reason why they want to destroy humans. Do you have a question, Sonny? No, I was just going to say that is that is very well known in a lot of Christian circles that when Jesus died, he went to hell. So I don't even think that's controversial um, Mm -hmm. just because that's taught. I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. And that he did. And then it created all of these, uh, I call it space junk, because it's, the the dark has to use mechanisms, as we had talked about a number of months ago, it has to create heart stones and crystals and conductors and all of these types of things in order to function. Mm -hmm. But that further condemned earth and humans right there to slavery, unfortunately. By slavery, it doesn't necessarily just mean you go to work every day, there's a financial system that's all messed up. It actually means that now your creative love energy that you get from source is now used 
100% to create something dark. Okay. And to maintain the dark here on this planet. So therefore, all of the energy that you bring into your body, uh, the majority of which you don't receive, uh, you, you know, that is cut right off the top. And then it goes down there and it becomes part of the Christ anti-source covenant, which also expired. So was it not a good thing then overall for Jesus the Christ to go down? Like that wasn't a mistake. Why, why would that happen? It was either that one because of the being being so powerful and so connected to source. Source is 99.9% closest to source, meaning pure essence, pure, pure consciousness, pure energy, uh, to go down or all of us, meaning all of humanity and all Earth's inhabitants, would have had to go down. That's how. That's the difference between a being that that is that powerful, and then the way all the, the way we have been. You know, this version of humans is okay. different than it was in the very, very beginning too. So humans, I, I keep saying you don't know how powerful you are because, as a group, as a united group. You can create something really amazing here on Earth. You know, we tend to fight each other a lot. Uh, you know, my views this way, these aliens from this planet are the way to go. These ones are the ones that are going to save us. Whatever it is, whatever the view is, you forget why it is important that you unite. Because together, as humanity, you can be just as powerful as the Christ being. Separately, you know, yes, varying days, varying degrees, varying amounts of darkness, varying amounts of depression, uh, things that prevent you from creating um, are thrown at us constantly all day, every day. You know, is April Fool's Day one of those days? You know, maybe it was. Maybe it's a day they make a mockery out of Christ or maybe, maybe make a mockery out of you. Uh, you know, is maybe it's a day that they used to feed the Antichrist energy, also known to you as death, in case you were wondering. We never had death uh, before, uh, not so, so much dealing with the Christ, but that was where it got amplified, let's just say. It, was, um, it took a program that was already kind of running, and just it took over Earth at that point, and all that was on it. Uh, and that is why at the Vatican on Friday, uh, they were making several attempts to leverage your soul, uh, to try to find any remnants of something that we call SESQB, which allowed them leans on your soul, leans on your energy, leans on your consciousness. And these people thought they were the ones to do the job, apparently. Hmm. Yeah. So they tried to relean humanity again uh, by doing some weirdo ceremony with some strange red and black stones underneath the Vatican on Friday. And um, it didn't stop there. This was an all weekend long thing because they weren't sure when the Antichrist was going to take back over Earth. And all this nightmare, according to them, that's what they call this uh, light age here, a nightmare. And all of this nightmare would be over, you know, and that was the hope. That was what they were wishing for over the weekend, uh, and that they would be back in control and all the money would come out and the Omega system would flip uh, and they would be able to bring it all back. So there was a few things that would turn on alien technology, not human technology, that would turn on around this time every year. Now, does that mean it was just a few days before April 1st? I don't know. Was it a Good Friday thing? I don't know. And if that is the case, then how could that be other than the entire world or billions of people, not all the people in the world, but billions of people are focused on the death of the Christ. You know, I always had a problem with this every year. I was like, A, why do we call it Good Friday? I don't think yeah. it's a very good day. And why are we celebrating this? I mean, the answer that I would get is because if he didn't die, then he couldn't rise and save us. And I'm like, we're still 
celebrating death. It just never made any sense to me. Never. Yep. Celebrating death. So death, by definition, if you remember the story, in, it's, it's been around a lot longer than this, but the anti-karana is what it's called, anti-karana. And the anti-karana is represented several times in human history as the serpent. So mm -hmm. for one, being the Garden of Eden, who, and in some cultures, they actually say that once she ate of the tree, that the serpent came and turned the tree into death, mm -hmm. which is true. We did have throughout the multiverse, not totally through the alphaverse, but in definitely throughout Earth, we definitely had a tree of death. Mm -hmm. We had that serpent, Antikarana, which was a being that was able to come in and around Earth, go no further, uh, based on the covenant with the Christ and anti source. So, yes, uh, we were essentially, I guess you would say, running on the tree of death, mm -hmm. uh, the exact opposite of the tree of life um, until recently, this weekend. So what is meant for our harm, we use for our good. So you don't know what you don't know, and Christians don't know what they're doing is bad. Uh, but these guys sure did, because they went to several different locations around the world, uh, I'm trying to remember all the different places, but Romania was one of them. Uh, definitely a couple of places in the United States, a uh, place in Arkansas uh, that I remember vividly. Uh, you would never have guessed where it is. it's like in the middle of nowhere, Arkansas, uh, mm -hmm. and nothing special. Uh, but they were definitely using this these machines because I guess they would go off at this time of year or is it that all of you humans focusing on the death of the Christ trigger them that is entirely possible again you don't realize how powerful you are so then they start emitting these frequencies in an attempt to open up the gateway to allow death in but how much does intention play into this, Kim? <clears throat> because the people that are going to services have a true heart in this, right? They they don't realize what's going on. You know, they don't realize the negative side of all of this, but they truly do believe that Jesus is God and it is their way of, of worshiping what they believe to be the creator of the universe through Jesus. So how mm. much does intention play into this? Because they're you know, they're not intending for nasty stuff to happen. You're still celebrating the death of the Christ. You are. Yeah. Yes, you That's are. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, celebrating the death of it rising is a whole nother story. Like that's <sighs> intent plays a role in the natural and organic. The focusing on an event plays a role in the inorganic world and its ability to create. Oh. oh, they're all focused on death, all in this one day. Isn't that great? They must want me to come back. Mm, okay. They must, they're looking for death. Everybody wants the death today mm. on this special day. So I think that that's really interesting because people have really good intentions when they go to a religious service or whatever. You know, they, they don't really understand what's behind what they're doing. And it's really important for us to to learn this, right? Because you don't know what you don't know. And a lot of this stuff has been used against us for a very long time. On Wednesday, Kim talked about Project Looking Glass. And this is probably a topic you guys have heard of before. If not, this is something to do a little bit of research on because there are some decent sound bites out there and interviews with people that have firsthand knowledge of Project Looking Glass. This is a this is alien technology okay that the deep state had some access to that would allow them to enter in calculations you know they want something to happen they could enter something into a system basically and see how the future would change based on xyz so let's just use 911 as an example you know they could determine well if we did this what would the outcome be well if it were two towers what would the outcome be that's what Project Looking Glass was. And this was used against us a lot. But something really interesting happened. And that's that they 
couldn't see beyond the year 2012. Now, that year may sound familiar to you because on the Mayan calendar, that was supposed to be the year that everything ended, right? I think there were a couple movies that came out for 2012. And that is why, because Project Looking Glass, you couldn't see past that year. So they assumed that that is when everything was going to end. Now, obviously, we're past 2012. (laughs) But this is when the changes started to happen, okay? And, you know, God's source is not going to allow the enemy to see exactly what's going on. So this was part of our transition into the light age. We are now fully in the light age. But this is when things started to happen. And there was nothing that was going to stop moving into this period of time. And so... Project Looking Glass was used for a lot of different things, but the people that are trying to still run planet Earth today and failing miserably, like I said earlier, they are still trying to use information from that time to predict what's going to happen. Now, they claim that they have access to information about possible events that are going to take place, they believe, between now and 2030. I don't really know where they're getting these numbers from because, again, with Project Looking Glass, you cannot see past 2012. But there is knowledge that's passed down, right? There's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. We've talked about that. Wisdom comes directly from source, from the creator, whereas knowledge is handed down, usually in like old manuscripts, old books, something that some alien left behind in some way. But it's not really accurate because we have free will. And the timelines have changed. So much has changed. But they are still trying to use this outdated knowledge to predict what's supposed to happen next. Now, this ties in with a story we didn't talk about in the the regional news, but Taiwan had an earthquake this week. Now, first of all, what the media is reporting is not accurate. They are claiming it's like 7.5 earthquake. That's not true. It didn't register above 4 to 4.5. Now, there were buildings that came down and things like that, and and some of that was man trying to make certain things happen, all right? So some of the pictures and stuff that you saw looks worse than, than what it was. Did people get hurt? Yes, and it is a tragedy no matter what. But I wanted to be very clear that it's not the crazy earthquake that people were suggesting, okay? Now, there is alien tech that was on various fault lines within our planet to cause these kinds of earthquakes to happen. And sometimes they would be triggered by things. And this is what we're starting to see now. So I want to play a soundbite where Kim is talking about something that triggered the Taiwan earthquake, because this was not a natural thing. This was alien tech that triggered it. But it was based on something really interesting happening with a gatekeeper program and source the creator was directly involved. So take a listen. There have been many predictions about earthquakes. Uh, Some are saying California. uh, That was supposed to take place a few weeks ago. Nothing happened there. Was there a mechanism that could have possibly allowed that to happen at some point in time? The answer to the question is yes. There was something there on the fault line, multiple different things on the fault line so that they could blow, and I'm not talking about the human beings, the fault line at any time. I'm talking about non-humans. Now, yesterday or last night's event, in Taiwan. Let's talk about the base root behind this. Have you ever heard the story, Sunny, about the Milk Ocean? I don't think so. Okay, there's a lot of information out there on the internet. A lot of it is coming through the Hindus. Uh, It's coming through India. Uh, There's a lot of talk about it and mythology saying it was the connection to Lord Vishnu in their world. Uh, There used to be a lot of information in Russian mythology about the Milk Ocean as well. Mm -hmm. uh, And a lot of prophecies about the Milk Ocean and how the Milk Ocean disappeared. Okay. Now. The milk ocean is actually a thing. It's not water. 
uh, you could call it a source version of a gatekeeper program. Mm. So the ultimate say as to what would have happened to the gate known as Keystone Earth and the gateway in Zero Point Earth uh, would have been up to source. Mm -hmm. So although GHQ and, you know, we are the nine, you remember that on the Q clock and, yeah. you know, and all these people believed they had the only gatekeeper program on Earth, that was false. Mm -hmm. It was always false. And the ultimate end say, a rip cord, a dead man switch, if you will, would have been with source. So even if these people got out of line or non-humans at some point, like Marduk and his sea control um, got out of line, source and anti-source, for lack of a better term, uh, could have pulled the rip cord and blocked the gate at any time. Mm -hmm. And the milk ocean was a part of that program. So gateways and overlays on gateways and membranes on gateways in order to prevent catastrophic events are often done with essence, energy, consciousness, matter, frequencies. There's all kinds of things that can block a gateway. And this milk ocean, for lack of a better term, was both the essence of source and anti-source. So it was like their gatekeeper key. So it was some Earth. sort of body of water. Well, not I say body of water, but, you know, body of liquid that was a source yes. and anti-source. And did it look kind of creamy or white? Is that why, you know, it got its yeah, name? Yeah. And I would call it um, not quite a cream color, but a very pale gray okay. because you would have had both sides involvement. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, in the gatekeeper program. So that's why they call it the milk ocean. And then was it in a certain location or no? Yes. It was a very large area that it extended through. Uh, you could go from the northern part of Russia all the way through the majority of China and down. Okay. Um, throughout most of Pakistan and India, throughout Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, most of Eastern Europe through to Romania. So it was a very large area where this ocean existed. Now, as far as the humans and the SSP are concerned, they are um, have been trying to utilize this or find a way to utilize it to their benefit for a long time. But again, it's a mixture of both light and dark. Mm -hmm. You cannot isolate just the dark portion for your purposes. Okay. It doesn't work that way. Um, and those types of things would have only been um, utilized uh, by, let's just say, uh, others, you know, in some cases, and by covenant only. Uh, so <clears throat> although uh, the gatekeeper program could only be removed, which it has been, by the way, by source itself uh, last night, when you say removed, does that mean the milk ocean isn't there? Yeah, they don't need it anymore. It's not needed anymore. There's no gatekeeper needed because there's no gate. So did it change color? Is it all white? It's yeah, it's not needed anymore. So it's not a it's not a gatekeeper program anymore. Yeah. Uh, the matter itself would flow through a lot of caverns with the predominant location being in Kazakhstan. Okay. Uh, for an entryway point, I would say it's been replaced by source essence for sure, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not acting as a gatekeeper program anymore or a blockage on any kind of a gate. Visually, does it look the same? Like if someone were to see it today, it just kind of looks the same. They don't really know the contents of what's within it. Uh, they don't know the contents of what was in it. And I don't think they ever really knew the content of what was in it and how it was controlled and what, what, because if they did, we would have seen a lot more yeah. uh, going on in these different areas for sure, I think, sure. because they would probably try to turn it all dark and think it's like a dial of destiny kind of thing, but yeah. it wasn't. It It had nothing to do with that whatsoever. Hmm. Uh, you cannot grow the darkness where 
there is a covenant that exists um, between source itself uh, to to place this there in the first place. Okay. So now when when it was changed, let's just say transmuted and changed, uh, then there was a trigger uh, that was put in place by non-human beings in several places in the world uh, that could have triggered earthquakes. So what we saw in Taiwan is not a 7.5. Uh, I know that our videos and all of this information that has been pre-planted uh, is telling us otherwise, but we didn't register anything over a 4, 4.5. Not to say that that's bad, you know, not bad. Uh, there was also an earthquake in Alaska um, uh, as well. Uh, now, in specific locations, of which we only had five left in the world, uh, it happened to trigger these dormant uh, machines alien technology, not human technology, uh, in a few different locations. And the one that actually triggered uh, the, I think it was uh, Tai Sheng Mountain in China, which is where the signal came from that went to Taiwan, was not a human thing. The humans in China did not do it. For once, the Chinese deep state did not do this. Now, since that report that went out on Wednesday, we have had more earthquakes happen. And this was happening throughout the day on Friday. So on Friday's newscast, this was interesting because Kim was running around doing a bunch of stuff. We didn't think she was going to make it to the news. She started to write something for me to read. And then she decided, oh, this is taking me long enough to, to write this. Why don't I just hop on really quickly? So she had a super short report on Friday where we did talk about some of these smaller earthquakes popping up. More happened throughout the day. So this is becoming more and more common right now. Is this the deep state doing this, causing these small things to happen, even though it's not good? It's not good when this happens at all. But these are smaller earthquakes. So is that the deep state? You know, is this being triggered by this alien tech? We don't yet have an update from Kim on all of that. There's a lot of things happening right now, obviously gearing up toward this huge solar eclipse on Monday. So let's briefly just talk about that because Kim did touch on that on Friday. We didn't say a lot, but the deep state is really trying to throw everything they can <laughs> at us right now. And they're even trying to use Kim's essence to cause bad things to happen. Like things, you know, they want portals to open. They want control of the alpha system. And, you know, they're trying to use her essence in different ways. Uh, it's it's not effective. It's not doing them any good. But this is what I mean when I say they're they're pulling out all the stops. So let's talk really quickly just about the eclipse, because this is going to be the focus for Monday's report, and I'm sure we'll be talking about it throughout the week, depending on what actually happens and how humanity as a whole experiences this eclipse, because this could be really big. So here's what Kim said about this on Friday. She said, the effects of the eclipse will be felt worldwide. This is going to be a positive experience for humanity. She said it's going to lead to new beginnings for us. And it is what you make of it, right? Like, I'm not usually into solar eclipses or lunar eclipses. I don't usually try to go outside and watch this kind of stuff. But I do have plans. This is happening right during the time we typically record the news. <laughs> so I think we might record a little bit and then pause because my intention with this is to go out there, spend time with source, and meditate during this time and just focus on love because I believe that that is going to do the best, the most good I can for humanity. Maybe it will intensify it. Who knows what's going to happen? But it can't hurt to be in a vibration of love during this really incredible time. And I will say, too, I'll give a short little teaser about something. So Friday evening, uh, some of the core UNN team members, we got together and had a, a quick meeting about a download that I got from Source. And I believe it is connected to this solar eclipse. But it was specifically about helping people who are just now starting to wake up. 
And I think the solar eclipse is going to lead to more people waking up. And so the download that I got was UNN playing a bigger role in being that, you know, creating a resource, so to speak, a soft landing. That's what we say here at UNN. Let's provide a soft landing for people that are just starting to wake up to what's really happening on this planet. Because when you listen to our newscast, especially the World Situation Report, it's kind of like graduate school. (laughs) We talk about stuff no one else is talking about. And if you don't have a little bit of a background, if you haven't done some research and stuff, it can seem overwhelming. Well, we need something for people that are just starting to wake up to things that are happening. And so uh, our leadership team had a quick meeting just to discuss this. I got some specific downloads from Source that I'll probably talk more about on Monday because I think we need to be that that soft space for people to land because people are going to have a lot of questions and they may not be ready for the graduate level work that we give on the World Situation Report, but it's still up to us. And I encourage you guys too. Um, I know it's easy to be like I told you so, but that's not what humanity needs right now. So if you're listening to this, odds are you know you're you're clued in already into what's going on. And um, I just encourage you guys to just be as loving as possible because things are going to start to pick up here and more and more people's eyes are going to be open to how the world really is and they're going to have a lot of questions. So, you know, just remember what you went through. So I know some of you guys were born awake. Oh, (laughs) God bless you guys because you guys have been around a long time um, dealing with this. I mean, I, I my eyes were opened about three or four years ago. And it has still been a process, right? And it's still been a challenge. And, you know, I don't have a lot of people around me in my day-to-day life that I can talk to about this stuff. And I'm I'm probably going to be one of those people that, you know, a lot of people turn to. Like, oh, I thought Sunny was crazy. (laughs) What's going on here? Maybe I'll start watching UNN. So just be loving, be kind. And uh, we'll tell you more about our plans with UNN to, to help people that are that are in that position because there are opportunities for you guys to get involved and you to help. So that's my little teaser about some stuff we're working on for UNN. We'll probably talk about it more on Monday's newscast. But uh, yeah, exciting things coming up on Monday. So hold the light, guys. You guys are awesome. Continue to do your research, right? For those of you that are new, that are like, what is this? What is this milk ocean and all this stuff Sunny's talking about? Start to do some searches. Right. Don't let just people don't let people just tell you stuff and don't just believe it. Like do some research. Right. Don't let humanity fall into the same trap that we fell into a long time ago where people started ruling us and then we got way off track and way away from source. Okay, so so think critically. Do your research. Always have an open mind. You know, here at UNN, we talk about, you know, if your cup is full, then you can't accept any new information. So empty your cup. Nobody knows everything, okay? We're all learning, all beings. I don't care what density and plane you're in. We're all learning. We're all growing. That's the fun of this. This is why. This is why we even exist is to grow and to learn and to develop. So don't think that you know everything because the moment that happens, you're going to miss something that's really important to you growing and learning and becoming the human that you came here to be, right? Right? So keep asking those questions because you will keep learning and always think critically. And if you like what we had to say today, please share this podcast episode with somebody you care about. If you want more information about us, you can go to unitednetwork.earth. That's what you get on-demand access to all of our UNN newscasts. The complete world situation reports, not just Sunny's quick little sound bites, (laughs) as well as original series. And you can also connect with us. So you can do that through our social media. We've got an awesome social media team that creates clips from our newscast that you guys can share with other people. If you are on our app, you can comment on the videos. I go through those. I know Kim goes through those when she's got a chance. And we try to answer your questions and just connect with you in various ways. We do have an online chat called United Chat that is available through our app. And those are just some of the ways you can connect with us online. Well, this is The Rundown. I'm Sunny Galt for United Network News, signing off.